All right, welcome back to the channel and thank you for tuning in to Johnny's Motorized Bikes. If you are not subscribed, by all means, please hit the subscribe button. It has legit been a month since I recorded, I would say. Yeah, probably at least, I don't even know. Like always, I got tons of stuff going on in my personal life and uh, I'm gonna do my best to try to get back into doing the videos and working on stuff. So I'm gonna start with this. What is in front of me? Well, what's in front of me is Bears, old cylinder. You can see it's busted. And what are we gonna put it on? Well, that's also a very good question. So, what we have in front of us is an extremely dirty 80cc, 66cc, PK80. This is Anthony's motor, the one that he destroyed by not letting it warm up. It is a very, you can see how dirty it is. You can see it is a very well used, much loved motor, whatever you wanna say. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna completely strip it down, look a little more in depth on exactly what may have caused the issue. And I want to do measurements on this because it pulls hard, it's basically plug and play with the carb, little needle change, and that's it. So I wanna get measurements on the, on the port timings on this. I never had measurements on this. This was done before I started using a degree wheel. So that's something I'm very interested in doing. Now I was watching, oh, what's his name? His name is John. It's a chainsaw channel, whatever. I pretty much watch a whole bunch of nonsense, but I watch him. He's a very good engine builder, porter for chainsaws. But we all know these are basically chainsaw, roughly, they're two strokes. He taught me something yesterday in his video that is good information. And I will share that with you shortly. Uh, once I figure out how to do it myself. But before we do any of that, we're gonna break this down, get our measurements, and clean it. Because I barely touched it and I'm already filthy. Not that I care about getting dirty, but we all know you don't like to get dirty. Me, case in point. So, I'm gonna turn you off, I'm gonna crack this open, and we're gonna get crack a lacking on what's going on inside. Okay, so about 10, 15 minutes later, we have the motor broken down. And I'm going to show you what we got. I know you've seen it in the I Destroyed My Motor video, kind of-ish, but not really. Okay, that's about top dead right there. You can clearly see a big notch right here and a big notch right here. They are, this one's kind of rectangle-ish, this one's kind of roundish. This motor is definitely before I did any cert clip uh, modifications or anything like that. So something that I did not do, this has the original this mating surface I never decked the cylinder like I said this is way back when I really didn't know that much also look at how much space is here I definitely didn't even check the squish on this so what the guy told me well told really told everybody see in there okay now the intake is just cracking open okay you can see the slightest little bit of a gap there so what this feller said is just as the intake opens you don't want to be able to see the top ring. Now, if you run one, run one ring, you don't want to see any rings. Now, you can see this port was not very aggressive, but it was a great little runner. So, this has an immense amount of room. The second ring is not even showing on this piston. So, that is just phenomenal information that I have not heard anywhere else. Very excited to start using that information and testing it on other things. That's just good all the way around, no matter how you slice it. Okie dokie, so I got all the measurements for this motor. Uh, one, I mean, I knew I was really mild with the way I ported this to begin with because I didn't have a degree wheel, I was building it for someone else, I wanted reliability, and I didn't want to have any problems, so I didn't go aggressive, I just stayed really chill. And it shows in the numbers. I am honestly quite surprised by these numbers because I really thought they would have been slightly more aggressive than this, but they're not. So. Something that I noticed, one, I checked for the ring showing, not even the bottom ring showing, so we're good there uh, with these numbers for whatever I wanna do. Uh, now, if I was to build these for someone else, I think I could bump it up a wee bit. So, okay, intake. We open 64 before, we close 64 after, 128 degrees of duration for the intake. The exhaust, we have 102 open, we have a closed 258, we have 156 degrees of duration. The transfers, we have a 121 open, we have a 239 close, we have 118 degrees of duration. Our blowdown is 19 degrees of blowdown. 
So, one, the blowdown wasn't even at 20. Uh, I prefer to run at 21 and 22, just for a baseline, pretty much. So, that's kind of interesting. Now, this is something that I'm paying attention to with all my builds now. The intake is 128 degrees of duration, and the transfers are 118 degrees of duration. So, there's 10 more degrees of intake duration than the transfers. And the reason I'm telling you that is what I'm noticing is when you have more intake duration over transfer duration, you basically supercharge the cylinder in a way because you're pulling in 10 more degrees of mixture to put into the crankcase for that the next cycle pushes 10 extra degrees into the transfers. Now, does it? I honestly have no idea if it actually does or not. What I have noticed, if you run your intake lower than the transfers or even within the first couple degrees as the same, you will have a much higher revving motor and not much stump pulling power. I like the stump pulling power because I am constantly pulling the stump. So that's why I do that. So we got everything we needed, we're done. This is trash. Something that I do need to do, okay, don't need to do, want to do. So this is the wrist pin for this motor. I'm sure you can see the wear. There is a clear amount of wear. I cannot feel it with my nail. There's no actual ridge, but you know, it's hardened steel and it is there. So you see it from here to here. Well, the bearing is not that big, okay? The coloration you see from here to here is what actually sits inside the piston hangers, okay? This one is a little more. I'm guessing the piston was a little thicker on that side, who knows? But that's how big the bearing is. So here to here and here to here shouldn't be getting worn down by this. What that means is this obviously moves back and forth as it runs. The connecting rod is slightly smaller, thinner, side to side. Let me push it all the way to one end. Okay, so I'm gonna level it off here. So that's level. Look how much sticks out, okay? Not a lot, but a little bit. So when it's leveled in between them, you see how much it moves. I wanna put some kind of a shim in here so that the bearing has to stay centered on the connecting rod. Let me figure that out because what I used last time, I was not happy. I just used washers last time. And they were okay, but I was not happy with them when all said and done. So I want to find something a little bit better, a little bit lighter, and just all around better. All right, guys, real quick. Uh, this is just a little bit out of the ordinary from where I was doing. I was actually in my room working on another project. But I got a call from Bear saying his, oh, I never brought the carburetor. Oh. I'm gonna take another ride back over. Well, anyway, I got a call saying his bike is not working properly at all. So, came over, checked her out, and it is missing the front mount. It must have vibrated off, fell off, whatever, not a big deal. Uh, the motor was kind of locked up. I think it was just twisted. I brought everything to get this off to see and check because I think it was because the chain popped off and the way it did, I think it bound everything up because the motor moving and stuff is no bueno. But this fell out when I was looking over the bike the uh, bleeder fell out of the uh, carb. So I'm gonna have to go back over to the house because I can't believe I forgot the stinking carburetor. I was telling myself 100 times, don't forget the carburetor, don't forget the carburetor. I forgot the freaking carburetor. So I gotta go get the carburetor. But either way, I'm gonna let you guys follow along as I fix this really quick. Plus I really wanted to get some shots of this thing, man. I really, really dig this bike and the way it looks and the overall appearance. It was hit real hard with the sun coming this way and it faded it like that, but everything underneath and all the patina on this is just so nice. And when you clean it up, like it's, you know, been ridden a little now, so it's a little dirty, but when you clean it up, man, is it just glisten. It's just a good looking bike, so. Okay, I'm back. I had to run out and do something. Bear's bike, <laughs> actually the guy who this motor came, this cylinder came off the motor of the bottom, uh, he's having a problem with his new bike. Uh, that will be in an upcoming video because it is outside right now. There is metal all up in the case, but no scoring on the cylinder walls, so I definitely think it's savable. Not really sure what happened. Maybe something exploded inside? I honestly don't know. But that's neither here nor there. So, 
and let us get back to what we were doing. Finally, five hours later. Anyway, so you saw it. I'm gonna give you, you saw the before. I'm gonna give you the after. I cleaned it all up. Now mind you, I don't have a parts bin washer. I use soap and water. And after I get the big grease all off, I use WD-40. Uh, actually, I just have WD-40 right now. Usually I use any generic all-purpose oil. So, you saw the head, completely disgusting. We got a little bit of ding-dangs right here, dingy ding dongs So we'll take care of that. It's not really a big deal. I'm not worried about that. No matter what, we're going to uh, bring this down. This was never actually surfaced, believe it or not. So we got that. We got this. No noise, no metal in there now. Bearings. So this is the case. I think it is Mucho Cleaner O. I don't know if you guys remember exactly what it looked like. I'll put up a picture right there. I don't know if I how to do that. But uh, yeah, so there you go. That's all I cleaned up. I didn't clean anything else up. But the important part is, is we... <clears throat> Thanks. The important part is, is we are cleaned up. The case, the crank, blah, 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 blah. Down here, watch this. I want to show you something. This is the heaviest part is down right now. I mean, yeah, lightest, the lightest part was down, and now the heaviest part is down. So where these holes are is much lighter than down here. Once you put the piston on and all the other Jimbo Jumbo, it becomes much heavier. So what everyone does is they drill holes here, here, and here, which is what I did to the last one. But I think I have a better idea than that. That's right. Always trying to improve on everybody else's idea. Typical white guy thing to do. Take something good from someone else and use it as their own. No. Uh, so, yeah, I think so. That's what I'm going to do. Uh, I will show you, obviously, what I'm going to do. I, I was thinking a lot about it a lot, and I was like, man, I, I, I couldn't get it to level out. And then I started thinking, I'm leaving weight on the end where I don't want it. So if I take the weight from the farthest point, I will have much better luck with getting it to level out with less work and possibly smaller, thinner holes. That's right. So I'll show you what I'm gonna do. I made the spacers. You can see them in there, see? All they are, I'll show you what they are. It is a piece of angle aluminum. This is actually from my old uh, bike, Terra Reed, when I built the rack on the back. It doesn't move around, so it should stay centered where I need it to be. So that's awesome. Also, uh, the good thing about this is these are much, much lighter than what I did last time. Really quick, I weighed them. Uh, they are 0 0.31 grams. So they're not even a full gram, which is not even a full half a gram, which is awesome. I remember that the other ones I used in the other one were almost about the half the weight of the bearing, if I remember correctly. So I got it up on my little old jig, whatever you want to call it, my little measuring stand. I don't have the rings on the piston, but I have them on the piston, if that makes sense. Uh, I also have the spacer, thrust spacer, I guess, for the crank bearing. I have them just sitting inside the bottom of the piston, the head of the piston. Now when you do your weight, when you actually do the measuring, it's important you want to make sure that your piston isn't swinging because that will give you a false reading. It has to be very steady and straight. Now, I also only did this once before, so anything I say is basically biblical at this point since I'm obviously a professional. So there you go. We're going to start drilling it out. Uh, normally, you would drill here, here, and here. Instead, I'm not going to do that. I am going to drill here, 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 here. I'm basically gonna drill here, not on the sides. See how that works. My main thinking behind that is this. Right here, you see how they drill these holes? These are for balancing, okay? That's from the factory, that's what they do. Problem is, is you have this chunk of metal from here to here. Now yeah, that doesn't seem like a lot, but let me tell you something. That much metal about, say, that far back is definitely the weight of like one of those spacers, the thrust spacers, probably not even that much, probably less than that. But what I'm, so what I'm saying is all this metal up here, if we don't have that, we might be able to do smaller holes in turn keeping the crankcase volume higher because the more holes and the larger holes you put in your flywheel, your crank, the 
more air volume, volume it takes to compress the air in the case because now there's more space to fill. That's why people put stuffers uh, in the case to take up space. So by putting the holes like this, I feel like you need to take more crank weight. Now it's not a lot, don't get me wrong, it's not like I'm talking, you're gonna have a lot of space and volume missed, but I'm a firm believer that all those little things add up, okay? You get a point one here, point one there, point one here, you get five point ones, all of a sudden you got half, half horsepower, whatever, but like if, if you got, you know, point this, point that, all these around, by the time you get done building your home motor, you might get a whole nother horsepower out of it. And yeah, that might seem stupid to some people, <clears throat> Brian, but it's not to me because I'm already in here doing the work. I don't mind doing the work. I enjoy doing the work and I might as well do the best work I can do. Anyway, I broke off the fins, the ones that were busted on here yesterday, just because they, I was going to leave them. I bent them so that they were all flat, but I was kind of like, what's the point? They're going to end up falling off anyway because they're going to vibrate. Even though they were bent up, they would just, you probably would have heard it. It would have sounded nuts. And I don't need any extra nuts going on in my life. I have plenty of nuts going on in my head already. Listen. Can you guys hear that? So believe me, I got plenty of nuts already rattling around up there. I don't need any more driving me crazy. Okay. Let's get back to it. To the Batmobile. Let's go Robin. There's no one else here. I'm talking to myself. Oh, I'm so lonely guys. What can you do? Right? Nothing. You either keep going forward or hang it up. And I'm not a good knot maker, so I'm just going to have to keep going forward. All right. Let's drill some holes and regret what we just did. Now, normally when you do this and you know, uh, I'm new. I have no qualms at admitting that. I don't know a lot, but I do know a good bit about common sense or just how to fix things. Like I just have an understanding on the way things work, let's say. And it's a good understanding, in my opinion. I know the way I do things might seem questionable to a lot of you that do it a different way, but you know, to each their own. Doesn't mean I don't know what I'm doing, probably. So normally you put a hole here, hole here, and a hole here. The reason you do that is there's already two holes here. The closer we are to where the weight is actually hanging, the less weight we need to take out. The less weight we take out, meaning the smaller the holes, the less the air volume needs to be in the crankcase to create the same amount of pressure to feed it in through the transfers to the combustion cycle. Okay, so let me continue going, let me get on it, and uh, I'll bring you in as I find out more. But uh, I'm actually pretty excited to see if this works. This is the first time I'm doing it like this, so I'm very excited to see if my idea here will work. If it does, awesome. If not, no harm, no foul. So for four broken bits, and for probably five hours, we got this. And this is what I did. I used from the stock hole to stock hole and I just hollowed it out. So everything got changed a little bit because I kept breaking bit after bit. I kind of had a problem. So this is the way I went with it, which was one of the thoughts I had. So it is a change of plans from what I originally wanted to do, but I honestly think this is good. So I went from hole, oh, hole to hole and I just took it out a little. Next time I do this, it will be even better. So six hours later, five hour, five hours later, oh, a while later, we're done. That is by far the best balance crank I have ever done. It's only the second one I have ever done, but it is definitely the best one. Oh, I've gone and done it now, guys. I, I'm just getting to the point. I just got the piston on. I don't have it on, on. I just got it set in there. No rings is what I mean. And I have no base gaskets just to see how it looks. This is this is what I'm seeing. First couple turns. First time I turned it over. All right, now zoom in and look close because it's hard to see. Unless you're blind. Anybody know what that means? We have a ring fully above. That means this is a low hole piston and this motor needs a high hole piston, which I was under the influence that this was a triple 40 
and I thought only 38 millimeters used the low hole piston. I thought the 40 millimeters used the high hole piston. So that's a problem. Ay, ay, ay. I'm gonna have to look through my bag of pistons because if I can't find one, I'm gonna have to use this one. Granted, it's not in the best of shape. I didn't clean this. This is just how clean it was after thousands of miles. The motor ran really nice. It's, it's a real shame that this happened to it. But uh, if I can't find one, I am going to use this. But that just means I'm gonna have to really doctor this thing up and fix it. And by fixing it, I mean just smooth it out completely. Uh, yeah, it's definitely a high hole and it's definitely a low hole. I could just see it just by looking at it now. Dang it, that's something I, I didn't even think to look at. Okay, well, I went into my box of goodies. This is like my pistons. I have an extra crank, some new gaskets. I have a few of them because I don't really use them. A couple spacers I cut, other stuff. Uh, it's basically all top end stuff, but I got this one. This is a type B piston, a high hole. Uh, this does have a skirt, but this piston isn't kind of catastrophic, so it's a good piston. All right, let's get at it. Okay, all cleaned up. Did the oiling holes, make them slightly larger, push them all the way through. I recessed it, cleaned up all the carbon on top. Let's go ahead and get her in. Okay, I, I, I got it back to where at least I'm back. I don't even know what I want to say. I'm, I'm back to assembling, which this this is why I tell you. So this cylinder, they're all different. This cylinder, 100%, was a good little runner. Okay? Okay, okay, okay. Here. So the intake was 60 in the other motor, not this bottom end, on a different bottom end. It was 62, the same cylinder. It opened at 62, closed at 62, it was 124 degrees of duration. On this bottom end, it is 136 degrees of duration. The exhaust is 166 degrees on the other bottom end. On this one, it's 162 degrees of duration. Not a big difference there, a little less. I'm honestly, I like this duration a little more on the new one, so that's good. The transfers was 114 degrees of duration. On this bottom end, it's 108 degrees of duration. I do not like that. The blowdown, we got 27 degrees of blowdown. It was 26 degrees of blowdown on the other bottom end, which it, it ran good, but I'm not a huge fan of that much blowdown. So what does that mean? <laughs> I don't know. It means I'm not happy with the intake. It means I'm not happy with the transfers. Uh, I'm only happy with the exhaust. But I, I just wanted to show you. This is the. St I didn't do anything to this cylinder except clean it up a little, and I meant clean the surfaces up, and scrub it with soap and water. I did not grind on it at all. And we have major differences. It, it's it's just crazy to me. Now, granted, this I have a base gasket. I had to put a base gasket in here because you know normally I don't like a base gasket. So I had to put a base gasket in here because with no base gasket and no head gasket, the piston was hitting the head. With just a head gasket, it would have not hit the head, but it would have been a very tight squish. With the base gasket and the head gasket, that's the squish. On this bottom end though, we got completely different geometry and completely different numbers. And I just wanted to show that to you so you guys could see I get some people ask me, oh, just give me some numbers. Okay, I, I can give you numbers to shoot for. Like, I can only give you duration numbers. I can't give you, like, how many millimeters unless you know there, there's so many variations and every little bit matters. All right, guys, so I spent all night thinking about this. I didn't get good sleep. I was up early. Continue to think about this and what I want to do. I really want to leave the motor as is because I've already done all the porting when it was on the other bottom end, as you know. Putting it on this bottom end, I was expecting different numbers, closer to where they were. Just, you know, you, you figure the cylinder head's the same. The bottom halves are basically interchangeable, but the numbers are so different, it's mind-bottling. Mind-baffling, mind-blowing, I don't, it's crazy, is what I'm saying to you. So, 
I thought about it and thought about it, and I was going to let the motor ride as is. 137 intake duration, 108 transfer duration, and 162 exhaust duration. I'm having trouble with that, man. I don't want to leave the transfers that low. But I think I'm going to go back in. I'm going to raise the exhaust up and make it more peaky. The intake's 136 duration. I could bring the, the transfers to a 134, technically, and still have what I need or want. But all I really want out of the transfers is about a 114, 116. I prefer like a 120 to 122 duration. But I'm not going to go that crazy because the only way I'm going to do this is I'm going to ramp the piston. So I'm going to take this off. I think I'm going to start with the piston and do the transfers and then I'm going to do the exhaust because depending on how much I get out of the transfers is going to change how much I do to the exhaust. You can see like how high the piston sticks up and how much lower it is here. Okay, not a tremendous amount. It's only a little ramp. Now I did ramp it towards the intake basically what it is I just leave this side heavier than I leave this side so that it's kind of pushed that way if it makes sense you know I mean who knows if it actually matters um, most people probably say it doesn't I don't care I like to do things my way it's part of the fun of being me so anyway I put this in my new numbers transfer opens at 121 remember it was opening at 126 it now closes at 239 it did close at 234 so we have a difference of five degrees which is actually one degree more uh two degrees total duration than i was expecting to get or hoping to get with a mild thing we went to a transfer of 118 duration that is freaking awesome that's pretty much balls accurate for where i want to be now i didn't touch the exhaust yet 121 open for a transfer and we have an exhaust of 99 open hmm. that puts my blow down at 22 that is pretty much exactly where i like to have my blow down that's if i don't move the exhaust at all man i'm leaning towards not touching it because i really like that 22 Blowdown usually equates to torque and RPM, but there is a lot of other variables. I used to think the blowdown, a lot of blowdown meant you just had a high revving motor. It's not true. Uh, there's so many more variables when it comes to it with the size of the intake, this one being 136 because of the skirt from the used piston to the transfers of 118. So we still have 18 more degrees of duration on the intake. So that means we have 18 more degrees of air volume trying to be forced into the crank trying to be forced into the transfer so that's why i like having more intake than transfer uh, it's kind of like i said kind of like supercharging it in a way it forces the air in there because you're pulling more air than you can put into the combustion chamber i like that okay after much deliberation and consideration i have decided to not open up the exhaust anymore I'm, so i'm happy with the way it is Okay, so we are back at it and we are outside. I gotta do something with this mess. I got way too much going on. I'm trying to get a hold of this blue bike. I'm gonna trade the woman that owns it. But this is probably gonna be my new daily. That's still to come. This one here, uh, I gotta rip it apart. I told you about it the other day. I'm not sure what's going on. Something inside is metal. Well, this shouldn't be too hard, hopefully. Okay, the reason I'm taking this motor off, you all know this is my daily. So the bolt broke off in the exhaust. Tis what it is. Nothing I can do about it. So it is time to go. I'm going to throw the whole motor out because of it now. That sucks, right? Yeah, I would never do that. You know that. I have a brand new cylinder, actually. And I'm going to take this inside and play with it because... Well, I'll explain when I get into it, but basically it doesn't make the power it should make. And I'm going to fix that problem. And I think I know how to now because <laughs> I'm a genius. Okay, guys, I kid you not. <laughs> I couldn't make this stuff up. I guess I could make it up, but I'm not. So I was just sitting in a chair looking over everything like this. Let me demonstrate. Mm, everything looks good. Mm, nice. Mm, okay, yeah. mm, yeah. mm, okay. Well, well, maybe I shouldn't. Okay, no, that looks good. Mm. So I guess everything's done. Mm, looks nice. Mm, okay, no, don't go down the ladder. That's good. Mm, clean, yep, wipe, wipe on. Looks like he's detailed. Well, guess the tire's gotta go on. Do -do 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 -do. I go get my tire, my, my pump, so I can pump it. And I literally go like this. With the pump. I stepped over the exhaust. 
What does that mean? That means I was about to start it <laughs> without the exhaust. I caught it though, so I guess that's a good thing. But I mean, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just don't. How do I manage to never remember to do the exhaust? <laughs> I don't know, guys. I literally forget to put the exhaust on every single build. Okay, guys, motor's on. I put new front brake pad, well, new used front brake pads. Petrified, like usual. Prefer it when they're petrified. I just like when the rubber's really hard because it takes a lot longer to wear them down because I'm fat. And put a new tube in the front. So we are good to go. Probably, mostly, sure. We'll find out. Okay, let's just see if she even starts up. I already don't like this pipe. Different sound than when 